Hello, Leander ISD, and welcome to the 29th Continuous Improvement Conference. You know, when I came to Leander ISD in 2019, this was one of the things that impressed me the most, that the district not only put on their own professional development conference, but they had it at such a high level and attached to a concept that is so close to my heart. We are a continuous improvement district. We have this deep culture going back many years in our district of really focusing on quality tools that help us to get better every single day. So welcome to the 29th Annual Continuous Improvement Conference, or CIC. Your next two days are jam-packed with so much fun and so much learning, and we hope you'll take advantage of every single minute of it. So I'm here to introduce you a little bit to the work that's gonna happen over the next two days. And I wanna start with a story that I started back in convocation. Actually, I started this back in the state of the district in the spring. And that is the story of my new friend, Eli. Now at convocation, I put a lot of pressure on Eli to solve some really significant problems. I don't know if you remember this little guy, but he was in kindergarten last year when I started talking about him, and now he's a first grader at Reed Elementary School and he will graduate in 2034. Now stop for a minute and think about what is the world gonna be like in 2034? Well, at Convocation, we outlined a number of problems, a number of challenges that Eli and his classmates are gonna have to face and solve when they graduate from high school in 2034. And so I wanna take a minute and let's go visit Eli and see what he's been up to solving these huge challenges. We're exploring books. You're going to be making your own movers. Helicopters can fly in the air. We just have to move. Oh. My name is Eli Ponce and I'm a, a fourth grade one from Reed Elementary. I read a lot of books. I like the pictures because they're a lot of details. I like its color and it has words. What have you done for your two moving parts? This is a blade and uh -huh. this is a wing. We're just doing parts of movers on a web because then they will take those parts to create an original mover. We do the creative awareness tools and their fluency, flexibility, originality, and elaboration. So that was just building their fluency and just brainstorming lots of different ideas for them. Could I wait a gin when you're done? Hope oh, you're done already. Okay, thanks. Eli is an amazing student. He is really good about doing exploration at home when we're talking about a topic. And he'll come and tell me like new information he's learned at home, and then he'll share it with his classmates. I feel like his energy is contagious. Excavators. Can I drive an what? excavator to school? No. Why not? He'll break it. I'll break it. Because it has a shovel in it. I feel like every year I'm kind of changing what we're learning, or I'm, I'm incorporating something else based on their interest and like their passions and what they love because I want them to love learning and I want them to love coming here and growing as learners. This is Eli. Oh. He's pretty cool, all right? Me, but this is Matias and Pedro, my friends. Do you know the world is changing rapidly, but I want to point out a couple of things that are gonna be problems that Eli and his friends are gonna to have to solve at some point in time. It's anticipated that about 400 million jobs or about 15% of the jobs out there will be displaced by automation by 2030. I made a robot like a long, like in quest by in four more days. It helps me clean up my room. Biometrics are gonna become absolutely critical. Biometrics? Uber Air consists of pilotless drones that will transport people from the suburbs to the city. Like so you do a helicopter and you get them, you, you ride someone to, to do a house. Yeah, what do you think about that? Pretty cool. Do you have to do it out of technology? Probably. To make it work? To make it work. Oh. What do you think? You think Why can't I just make a level 
to make it work. Do you think you, a lever would be the trick? Yeah. You think so? When Eli graduates in 2034, the world is going to be a different place. So what's it going to take for you to be able to do all of these things? I'll try. I think I have to work each day. Be older. Be but older. <laughs> you can't use technology when you don't get like very when you can't create technology. Do you think you could do it by yourself? No. I might need the help of my brother. My teachers helped me ask a lot of questions. They then help me do things I don't know what to do. Eli is an amazing leader. He loves to learn. He comes every day just ready, ready to learn. He loves to be challenged. He's part of the dual language program, so we work with partners, and he's a really good partner. Just being seven years old, or being a first grader, and be able to think on teamwork, and be able to think on, yeah, let's solve these problems together, and how can we synergize to, to be a better world, because that's the way they think, and that, that's the way Eli thinks, and that's the way the dual language program thinks, and, and our Leander ISD. How can we do this together? And I, I listen to you, and, I, and we have different opinions, but we listen, and then we get a better uh, solution. They are going to be doing amazing things in the future, like they are. I believe in them. As you can tell, our future is in good hands, even if it's only Eli and his brother. But let's examine Eli's story a little closer. Because it takes a village to raise a child, it's really important that we understand the impact that Eli's family has on his future, as well as his schooling and the educators who interact with him on a daily basis. And so I want to introduce you to Eli's mom. And wasn't I pleased to see that Eli's mom is one of our very own hashtag one LISD life changers. And wasn't it a pleasure after convocation for her to come up in her hashtag one LISD t-shirt to sit with me and say, you really putting a lot of pressure on my little kid. It's been really fun to interact with her and learn a little about her story. And so I want to share some of that with you today. Allison grew up in Massachusetts and she learned Spanish as a second language. And then during a semester in college, she lived in Santiago, Chile, where she obviously perfected her language skills. Her career in bilingual education began in South Texas and that's where she met her husband, Felix. And she says that the border is the perfect representation of her bicultural family because he grew up in Mexico and she grew up in the United States. They, as a family, are so grateful that Eli can participate in the dual language program in Leander ISD. They really love the fact that he has friends in Cedar Park, as well as friends as far away as Venezuela and that the combination of those experiences in his life are shaping who he is and how he will solve those really challenging problems that are coming to face the class of 2034. She's been a bilingual educator in South Texas for 20 years and now with LISD for 13. She currently has the honor to serve as a dual language curriculum specialist in our district and is doing an amazing job of supporting both our elementary and middle school bilingual teachers in the district. But not only that, she's a mom, and her connection with Eli and with hashtag one LISD is what is going to make Eli truly great. I want you to remember that our job is not to prepare students for something. Our job is to help students prepare themselves for anything. And as we take this journey, we have made a concerted effort to build a really solid foundation that will help us 
to achieve these really challenging goals. So our board has done incredible work over the last three years, along with all the stakeholders in our community, in our hashtag one LISD family, to set core beliefs in place, to build a vision, and to set the mission how we're going to get there. Not only that, but we've now defined the how through the strategic plan and the five goal areas that are driving the work that we're going to do on a daily basis as we go forward to meet these challenges. But it's really, really important that not only Eli and all of the friends in Eli's class and the classes that make up Reed Elementary and the campuses that make up LISD, we have to make sure that we have alignment in our goals, in our vision, and in our process. We also have to make sure at the same time that we have enough autonomy that people can make the professional decisions that are necessary to solve really gnarly problems right here in the moment in real time. And that's what our goal is going to be. And on this visual, you'll see that at the top of the arrow is the graduate profile. But that's not really our final destination. Our final destination really is empowered learners. And not only kids, but adults in the system. Because when the adults in the system are empowered to learn and to modify and to change and to make professional decisions that they all know are right in their hearts, then we will empower our students to be the learners that they need to be to solve these problems that some of which we don't even know exist yet. So what are the tenets that are important for our kids to have as they exit our system? Well, we asked our community, what are your hopes and dreams for your kids as they exit our system? We asked Allison, what are your hopes and dreams for Eli as he graduates in 2034 and exits our system into this world? And collectively, we defined and redefined what is in our graduate profile. We know that our students have to be critical and creative thinkers. We know that they have to be really skilled communicators and they have to be able to work in teams. They have to be able to collaborate. Compassion and community building is absolutely critical for our students as they work through these challenging problems. And I bet you that it's going to be true that they're going to get hit with things that they didn't know existed and they're going to have to be adaptable and flexible along the way. But does that mean that they don't have to have sets of academic skills? Absolutely not. Because the academic skills that we impart every single day in every one of our schools is what sets the foundation for our students to be empowered with all of these skills that exist in the graduate profile. So how do we go about this work? Well, as I was looking at the learning model when I entered the district in 2019, I noticed in the top right corner a small and seemingly insignificant phrase called continuous improvement. I also discovered that if you go on our website and look at the learning model, that it's interactive. And if you click on that word continuous improvement, it takes you to this document, which is the culture of continuous improvement in Leander ISD. And I was amazed at how well this aligned with my belief system, with my own core values. What I love about Leander ISD is that every single time we put student learning at the very center of everything that we do. That is our focus. And then we surround ourselves in these tenets of collaboration, of failing forward, of ownership, and of cycles of improvement. And so, what do these mean exactly? Well, we know that we cannot do it alone. We know that Eli cannot solve those problems alone. But we cannot put all the dots together that help Eli to meet these challenges alone. We have to do it together. And collaboration is so much more than teamwork because collaboration rests on what George Kouras said are the three most important things in education today. Relationships, relationships, and relationships. We have to take an attitude 
of failing forward. What do we mean by that? Does that mean that we should expect to fail? Well, there's a difference between failing fatally and failing forward. And I don't mean that we should fail fatally, but we absolutely fail forward every day. Because that allows us to take risks, to push a little farther, to do things that we would not normally do because we know this is a safe space for us to try, for us to challenge, for us to push at the edges. And as we fail forward in this environment, we know that because of our collaborative culture, we are spotters ready. We're going to have people circling around us to pick us up, to support us, to help us to move forward. You can't fail forward, however, if you don't have ownership of your learning. And we are required and have a responsibility to push that ownership for learning down to the very lowest level possible. And that, of course, is with our students. Traditionally, in public school, we have not allowed our students to own their learning. We have forced that learning on them. And in my opinion, we have to make that change. We have to connect our students to their interests, help them develop their passions, so that we can ignite their learning. Because when we do, we will not be able to stop the problems that they can solve. How do we do this? Where I come from, we ask the question, how do you eat an elephant? And the answer, of course, is one bite at a time. But not only one bite at a time, but you have to come back and eat another bite and another and another. And you have to get a little better at it every time or you'll never get through that elephant. And that's what we mean by cycles of improvement. We're going to start, we're going to iterate, and we're going to iterate, and we're going to iterate until we eventually get better. This whole culture of continuous improvement has to exist at every level of our organization. And that's what this whole conference is about. That is the learning that you're going to witness and engage in as you go through the next two days. And I'm absolutely thrilled that you're here. So let's talk about our structure a little bit for the next two days. It was very difficult for us during COVID, but we put on the Continuous Improvement Conference anyway. And I'm really glad we did because we learned a lot of lessons along the way. One of those lessons is, is that we should be flexible and adaptable too, and thus the hybrid structure. So this first day is virtual, and you'll be able to do this from the comfort of your homes. And we hope that you'll take full advantage of the incredible knowledge that's coming to us from the outside through this virtual platform. And then tomorrow we'll be together in person but we're a large organization. We can't do all of that in one place, and so we'll be spread out around the district. And we encourage you to come, take part, engage, connect, and feel that sense of belonging as part of our hashtag one LISD family. And tomorrow afternoon, you'll have time to go back to your campus team and to work together as you prepare for students to come back and for you to do it a little better tomorrow than you did it on Friday. We realize the need you have for connection, and we know how important it is for us to work together and to cross-pollinate ideas. And so we've created these cross-district PLC collaboration spaces for you so that you can have that outside opinion and hear those other voices that in your normal day-to-day -day operations you wouldn't necessarily get to hear. So you're gonna hear from John Spencer, about navigating the maze, about the real messy world, about graduate profile, and about student empowerment. You're going to hear from Katie Martin. So you have a graduate profile, so now what do we do with it? You're going to hear about learner-centered innovation and about how we have to evolve education to meet the needs of our growing population. You're going to hear from Colin Seal about critical thinking as equity work, about low floor and high ceiling. You're going to hear from Casey Bell, a former LISD family member who's here to really impart ed tech with you and help learn together with you in the space. All of these folks, experts in their field, are coming together because they know the importance of continuous improvement and they are here to share how we empower learners at all levels in our district. But perhaps even more importantly, you're going to hear from your fellow LISD educators 
about the continuous improvement processes that they're operating with and exercising through in their environments. You're even going to hear from some students. My very own student superintendent advisory council is going to make several presentations. But not only that, and this really impressed me, is they want to hear from you. They want to hear about what are your struggles and how can they help you to meet those challenges. You're going to hear from a young lady named Avery, who is a student author, self-published, and really accomplished. And you can hear a little bit about her journey too. And open up the possibilities for other students to do the same in your classrooms. We have students from all over the district helping us run logistics on their day off as they earn community service hours and really contribute towards that tenant of the graduate profile. And finally, you'll have the opportunity to hear presentations on the really important elections information that is happening on November 8th for our district. So thank you. Thank you for being part of Hashtag One LISD. Thank you for being part of our family. Thank you for putting your heart and your soul into educating the children of our community. You truly are life changers. You truly impact the future. So now, take this time to rest, reflect, and learn in this great 29th Continuous Improvement Conference. Thank you.